It is May at Alice in Wonderland, and that means it's cactus blooming time. Cactus are very short-lived uh, flowers. Generally, a flower will come out and be open for a day or maybe two, but there is a series so that any one cactus might have buds that will open up tomorrow that you can see on the left, and then some uh, flowers that are open today. Uh, these are mostly Echinopsis hybrids from South America, and they are beautiful. There's red, orange, yellow, white, pink, and uh, I like the red myself. The beauty of these cactuses is that, is that they grow very well from cuttings. It's very easy just to lop off a piece and send it home with somebody. You can put it in your garden and it roots in very little time and you too will have blooming Echinopsis in the garden. This is one of my favorite plants in the garden. It's the king of yuccas. This is Yucca keretroensis. You have to be careful because the leaf tips are rather sharp. This is only 11 years from a one gallon pot and a uh, beautiful plant. I keep it trimmed up here to keep it out of people's way. And I have a few offsets I've managed to collect off of these mature plants. And so I'm growing, uh, growing some more. Are you kind? This is a popular plant. It's a, what I call twisted sister. I think some people call it serious tortellini or equivalent. It's a weird freaky form that does the spiraling. And you can see it's blooming, so added bonus today to get the uh, spiral and the flower, uh, the plant in bloom. So this is an epiphyllum I've had in this container for a number of years. And it's one of the prettiest of all of the flowers with this iridescent pink purple color. And the flowers last for about a day, but you can see from the new buds that are coming, it's gonna continue to pump out flowers for several weeks. One of the common names for these is Christmas cactus, which I don't understand because all the epiphyllums I ever see have seen bloom at this time of the year, not around Christmas. You can uh, distinguish the epiphyllum cactus, which has this appearance from other closely related genera, which have a very similar flower, but instead of having a flat um, leaf, they have a triangular leaf, a leaf that's triangular in cross section, usually in the genus Hylocereus. That's the genus that uh, the dragon fruit is in. You really missed it. You should have been here yesterday. It was a wash with flowers in full bloom. You can see that one is still open and you can see the buds in the back of flowers to come in a day or so. I have never seen this Echinopsis blooming. I must have gotten a piece of it years ago and stuck it in the ground and this is the first time I've ever seen it bloom. And it's an absolute delight because it's a color I don't have anywhere else in the garden. Beautiful, in full bloom, I'm really thrilled to see this. Another of the wonderful Echinopsis hybrids. So this is another surprise right around the corner from that orange one. I believe this is the one called Flying Saucer. And I just took a piece that fell off of one up in the main garden and stuck it here on the ground and forgot about it. Isn't it fun to come around the corner and see something you forgot about that looks like that? So this is a really oddball terrestrial bromeliad from South America. I think I saw it in Chile. This is Deuteraconia longipedula. Looks kind of like a Dickia or a Hectia, but it's a Deuteraconia. And what's curious about it is that every year when it flowers, it flowers at the end of this inflorescence. Then eventually, of course, it loses the flowers, but it doesn't lose the, the stalk, the inflorescence. And then the following year, it grows out further. So these stalks just keep growing, 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 and the flowers are at the very end. I think in the wild it's an adaptation because the plant is growing down in the middle of a great big hedge, which is getting bigger so that this plant has to continue to extend its flowers to be beyond the reach of the plant under which it's growing. Uh, they're kind of pretty looking yellow flowers. They last for quite some time. Over here is Cyphostema carori, one of the most sought after of the rare Cyphostemas from Namibia. It's dormant for several months of the year, and then come the new leaves and the flowers. They're very curious. They come out this kind of orange green color, and then the leaves expand rapidly into these large fleshy green leaves. And these cauliflower-like inflorescences will soon be sporting, hopefully, a seed because very popular plant. Here's another Cyphostema carari. 
I've had it in this pot for, I don't know, six or seven years. And last year I lopped off the two heads because they were leaning over here to the right and were loaded with these big leaves. Now you can see the new growth is coming around the periphery of where the stems were cut. But let me take you over here and show you, show you what happened to those cuttings that I made. There's two of them, here's one right here. That's in one year, less than a year, from removal from that parent plant, rooting it out, and now it's leafing out and growing faster than that one. So to compare and contrast Cyphostemma karori with its more common close relative is Cyphostemma jutai. And uh, jutai, the leaves are a little more glaucous blue color. They grow much faster generally, and they are much more common. I love to grow this plant because it's very easy from seed. It's easy to germinate it at least. This is Ficus petiolaris, and I have about a dozen or so of them. They seem to be attracting a lot of attention, uh, mostly because of these conspicuous red veins in the leaf. This will grow into a great big tree. You see them in southern Mexico, like in the state of Oaxaca, clinging to rocky cliffs, and the stems are yellow, yellow white colored, and they're beautiful plants. My intention is to grow them up a bit so they look like little trees. Ficus petiolaris. I think of all the hybrids I've ever made, this one has been the most popular. This is Encephalitis arenarius by Woody Eye. And the demand has been such that I've sold just about all of them, but I've kept this one because it's a female. And the double delight here that the cone, which I pollinated in January, is still developing, but here comes a new flush of leaves. You can see by the old leaflets, these great big, fat, glossy, green, shiny, uh, woody eye looking um, leaflets. It is a spectacular shape and a spectacular color for an Encephalitis hybrid. And the great excitement in the cycad world here at Aloes in Wonderland is when the Encephalitis latifrons put out new crowns of leaves. This one is pumping a huge crown. Looks like it's going to be close to 25 leaves in there. This is what I wanted you to see. And this is why we indulge these vertical spiny green worms all year, because when they flower, they're a knockout. Uh, this obviously is a white cactus, but look at the red tinged um, sepals, corolla. Not sure in a cactus flower what's a, a petal and what's a sepal, but uh, part of the flower lower down has got that nice red tinge and beautiful thing. So I brought you down the hill to show you this kind of uh, stunted Brachychiton rupestris. Rupestris, by the way, means living on cliffs. What's interesting about Brachychiton rupestris is they lose all their leaves and get a new set of leaves all within one week. They will have a nice set of green leaves and then boom, they drop them all onto the ground. And then one week later, here come the new leaves and they have this really rather attractive reddish color to them. So here is a nice mature Brachychiton rupestris with the leaves that it has held for about a year, medium green colored. And then one day, probably very soon, it will drop all those leaves at once. And then it will be bare, but only for about a week. As you can see by these other uh, Brachychitons, they've already dropped their old leaves. And here come the new ones. You can see the kind of reddish color of the emerging leaves. Those leaves will grow out and be completely um, filled out in about another two weeks. Happens really fast. While we're talking about Brachychiton rupestris, often they develop stretch marks. It's a sign of fast growth. As they start to really expand, they crack and then they fill in the cracks and get these, well, these stretch marks. Well, here's a male cone on a Cycus titingensis. Unlike other genera of cycads, the genus Cycus, the male cones tend to smell like cotton candy. Well, I think we'll finish today's walk and talk at Aloes in Wonderland with this Cycus titingensis female. You saw the male cone earlier. Here's the female cone, and other, unlike other genera of cycads, the new crown of leaves comes right through the old crown of the old female uh, uh, cone. 
you can see that the cone is just a loose association of modified leaves not nearly as specialized as it is in all other general cycads. And then here are, well, the seeds, but I didn't pollinate it, so they're no good. Here comes the new crown of leaves growing rather quickly. I grew this plant from seed. It's about 25 years old from seed. It's amazing how fast this species grows. Titan gensis is the species that should have gone into popular cultivation rather than the so-called sago palm, Cycus revoluta. It grows bigger, faster, doesn't get black spots or yellow leaves, and um, it's an animal. Anyway, that's it from Alice in Wonderland. Please like and take a hike.